Well, public officials urge everyone in flooded areas to stay home unless absolutely necessary. Many streets in Greenville are closed because of flooding, but some remain open. Mayor Simmons urges motorists to avoid these areas if you have to go down one of these streets, drive slowly. We also would like to tell all kids, uh, do not get out in the water. Our sewer system has been compromised and the water is not safe water to swim in or play in. All right, well, Simmons and emergency management officials say people sightseeing or causing problems traveling down flooded streets. They are risking the safety of residents and first responders pushing water into houses as they drive by. And we will hear more from Mayor Simmons later in the broadcast. Well, this morning, Highway 1 and Highway 82 intersections were completely flooded. Several roads in Washington County are still impassable due to major flooding. Even the Mississippi Highway Patrol urging drivers to turn around if you encounter flooded roadways. Corporal Tony Dunn is a public affairs officer for the Mississippi Highway Patrol Troop D in Greenwood. If you see water uh, across the highways, uh, please don't go through it. Uh, if, if you can't see the roadway, we definitely don't want you to go through it. It's a uh, um, you know, safe hazard. You don't know what's happened. You don't know if the road has collapsed under the highway or anything or under the water or anything like that because that water is going to seep under that asphalt and then it may do away with that dirt underneath there and it could do away with the road itself. So if, um, if you're out driving and you do encounter some water that's across the road, even if there's a bridge, the bridge there or something like that, please do not attempt to go across that. Turn around as they say, turn around, don't drown. Well, Don says troopers are working hard to keep drivers safe. Well, at least a few vehicles ended up underwater. One motorist on South Raceway Road says his car hydroplaned and he lost control running into a ditch. About a mile away, another vehicle was submerged on low road. Again, emergency officials urge all motorists to turn around rather than take a chance. For a list of city and county roads that are closed, go to our website, yourdeltanews.com or the WXVT Facebook page. And calls from local residents about house flooding also pouring in. The Greenville Police Department began receiving calls around one this morning from people whose homes were flooded. Safety officials say if water gets into your home, turn off the main circuit breaker and call 911. They will provide transportation to a shelter or another location. Uh, we're fielding a lot of calls for people wanting sandbags. We had a stockpile of sandbags from back in January when the river was up uh, about 10,000 bags. Those are gone. They're making them as fast as they can. Well, Greenville residents who need sandbags should call 662-378-1546. All others are urged to call 662-334-4322. Well, Red Cross now opening shelters. Emergency officials announcing the Washington County Convention Center opened its doors at 1 this afternoon for those needing a place to stay due to flooding. The convention center is located at 1040 South Raceway Road in Greenville. Red Cross staff will coordinate with county emergency management as well as the Department of Human Services. Red Cross also opened a shelter at the Clarksdale Civic Auditorium at 506 East 2nd Street. Well, flooding isn't the only problem hitting the Magnolia State. Some residents in Mississippi waking up in the dark. According to Entergy Mississippi, close to 800 people were without power in Sunflower County. Crews were also in Moorhead repairing a damaged power pole that affected more than 400 customers. Downed trees were also a problem for some residents causing outages. Entergy Mississippi's Gerald Husband tells us the Washington County area was affected by isolated outages. Power is expected to be restored by the end of the day in most areas. With the exception of the Meadowwood Drive community, where 10 customers are without power, husband says underground facilities are underwater in that area. Crews have to wait for water to recede before restoring power. Husband also tells us crews will take a look first thing in the morning, and if the water has receded, workers will energize equipment in the area. Meanwhile, severe weather prompting the Delta's only air service to cancel all flights. Reports say because of the continual downpour of rain here in the Delta, Boutique Air has canceled all flights today. At last check, the company has not announced whether flights will resume to Tomorrow, Boutique Air has provided Greenville with passenger service since October 2015. Well, we'll get back to your weather and emergency coverage in just a moment. We turn now to a manhunt in your state news. The search for a Warren County jail escapee on the run for over a week comes to a deadly end. Authorities tell us Raphael McLeod was shot dead after breaking into a Jackson home. According to Vicksburg Police Patrols, responded to a burglary around 7 this morning. The burglar took a man, his wife, and a four-year-old child hostage at gunpoint. Reports say 
At some point, there was an altercation and the homeowner shot McLeod. We're told the homeowner was injured during the struggle, but his wife and child were not hurt. McLeod escaped the Warren County Jail last Wednesday, March 2nd. According to Sheriff Martin Pace, McLeod held an employee hostage with a shank and took the guard's radio, keys and uniform. McLeod was in jail for the 2015 rape and murder of 69-year-old Sharon Wilson. And continuing your Delta coverage, a mother and baby are dead after a fatal crash near, near Greenwood. Crews were called to the scene of the accident yesterday morning on Highway 82, just west of Highway 7 in LaFleur County. According to the Mississippi Highway Patrol, 50-year-old Jesse Warren was driving a GMC Envoy. He allegedly drove in the opposite lane into oncoming traffic, crashing into a Mazda carrying three people, including an eight-month-old baby. The driver, 23-year-old Kimberly Doyle, died at the scene. Alfonso Morris and the child, Harmony Kraft, were passengers in that car. Warren and Morris were rushed to the Greenwood LaFleur Hospital with minor injuries. A child was later pronounced dead at UMC in Jackson. Highway Patrol still investigating the deadly crash. Well, a man, federal prosecutors say place a noose on a statue of a civil rights activist who will get a second chance to plead guilty. Federal court filings show Austin Edenfield is set for a March 24th hearing on a criminal charge. Judge delayed Edenfield's September plea hearing. The filing does not indicate what charge Edenfield faces. The prosecutor said in June that Edenfield took part in the February 2014 incident when a noose and a former Georgia state flag with a Confederate battle emblem were placed on a university. University of Mississippi statue of James Meredith. Rato Edenfield's lawyer did not immediately respond to requests for comment. Back in 1962, Meredith became the first black student admitted to the university. Well, coming up in your Delta News at 5, more on the action plan as the Delta fights back against severe weather and floodwaters. Greenville Mayor Eric Simmons joins us live in the studio. And here's Eric. He continues to track the storms around the area. Eric. Yeah, for our eastern counties, they are still dealing with the rain this evening. But as we get Saturday, there's that chance of rain again. Two to five inches still possible. Sunday, we might actually get a little bit of sunshine, but that will bring the possibility for severe weather during the afternoon hours. Monday looks to be the only true dry day over the next seven days. As we, then as we go into the middle of next week, we're bringing in slight chances of rain during the afternoon hours as that heating of the day could spark some of those pop-up summer-like thunderstorms that we're so mm -hmm. used to because we are just so extremely wet. It's not going to take much for that little bit of moisture to evaporate and then fall back down as we move into the afternoon. As you can see, temperatures extremely mm -hmm. warm into the 80s and upper mm -hmm. 70s. All right. All right. Thank you. It's really scary for our area. So guys, definitely stay tuned to WXVT. For and the rain is not covered. done yet. More rain is still to come. So just please be alert over the mm -hmm. next several days. All right. Thank you so much. We'll still head to Delta News at 5. We'll head to a meeting just ending with local emergency crews. More on the plans and strategies developed to combat this severe weather coming up. This is WXVT, your Delta News at 5. This is WXVT Delta News at 5. All right, welcome back. Joining me now is Greenville Mayor Eric Simmons. Mayor Simmons, thank you so much for joining us here today. Now, we're talking about this severe situation we have going on. It's really, really scary for a lot of folks here in the Delta. It's something unlike what we're used to. Mm -hmm. What do you guys have planned here in Greenville? You've already declared a state of emergency, right? That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing now, Lakia, is making sure safety is our primary goal. Mm -hmm. And so uh, a lot of that is going to turn on the residents staying in their home, not compromising the lives and safety of themselves and also the destruction of further property of mm -hmm. citizens. We had an emergency management meeting at four o'clock. Uh, we've had over 75 evacuations at this point in time, wow. uh, including uh, the evacuation of two dogs. Uh, what mm -hmm. we want to do is make sure people stay in their homes. Mm -hmm. No one is playing in the water. Uh, like you stated uh, earlier, the water, the sewer system has been compromised and the water mm -hmm. is contaminated. Right. Uh, our plans going forward is uh, making sure we are gearing up and adding more sandbags. Mm -hmm. If they need sandbags from the city, if you're a city resident, you can call three numbers, 378-1546, 378-1548, 378-1556. If you're a county resident, you can call 394-4322. And the mm -hmm. plan going forward is to meet again tomorrow morning about seven o'clock mm -hmm. with all of the county and city uh, emergency management personnel. Okay, now when you call a state of emergency, what type of resources can um, mm -hmm. city residents expect now that the 
state of emergency is in place. There's a long drawn out process with mm -hmm. that. Uh, we have Mississippi Department of Transportation here, we mm -hmm. have Mississippi Emergency Management Agency here, and what we're trying to do is see whether or not there are any funds available uh, in the state of Mississippi to assist residents with the destruction of their property, uh, with their homes of mm -hmm. any nature regarding this uh, severe flooding event. Mm -hmm. uh, at this point in time, we're asking for help. I know Greenville, along with other Delta towns, have been flooded out, and so it's more a regional thing. And so if we get some help from federal uh, government, it will be an opportunity for uh, our citizens to access more funds. Okay, and right now we do have um, different um, resources for the residents, one in particular, the Red Cross yes. shelter that we the have Miss as well. Mississippi Department of Health is here, mm -hmm. uh, helping with nursing homes. Uh, also, the Red Cross is here helping with shelter operations. The mm -hmm. Washington County uh, Convention Center was open around 2.35, 3 o'clock. Uh, we had 15 uh, mm -hmm. people in the shelter. That number has decreased to four now. But overnight accommodations are being made for residents as well. Okay. Now, this state of emergency will be going on for how long until further notice? I mean, we have more rain to come. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you recall back, in 2008, we had a high water event uh, with a lot of raining with Gustav. Talking to our mm -hmm. water uh, waste, I mean, I'm sorry, talking with our uh, emergency management experts, the water levels that we're seeing today are higher than we had in 2008. And it's due partly because of the large number of rain we had in a short period of time. Mm -hmm. And so we're working on that. We're trying to clear drains out as we can, but we have certain uh, uh, ditches and canals that are mm -hmm. almost at bank level now. And so there's no other place for the water to go. And right. so only time will help us in this situation. All right. All right. Well, you gave us the numbers that we can use to contact. Yes. And Mayor Simmons, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you and be safe. All right. All right. Still ahead, we've got much more coming up on this emergency situation. We'll head to a live meeting right after the break. This is WXVT or Delta News at 5. This is WXVT Delta News at 5. Welcome back. Washington County Safety Management holding an emergency meeting today. Crews working to get strategies in place to help residents affected by floodwaters. Everything from shelter to sandbags were brought up in this meeting. WXVT's Melanie Dotson joins us live from the location with details. Melanie. Several agencies, including Emergency Management, MedStat, and the Department of Health, along with Greenville and Washington County officials, held an emergency meeting just minutes ago discussing the next plan of action in response to today's severe weather. Now, those strategies include making more sandbags and blocking those roadways that are flooded here in Greenville. Now, officials say this is the most rain Greenville has seen in forever, and they are saying that emergency responders are working around the clock preparing for the worst. At last check, here in Washington County, 95 residents have have been evacuated along with two dogs and five horses. Right now I'm joined with David Burford, who is with Emergency Management. He's going to tell us some more tips on how to be safe in today's severe weather. David? Good evening. Uh, the main thing we want to focus on is, is talking about safety tonight. What we want to do is tell the people if your house has water in it or if you think the water is fixing to come into your house, what you need to do is turn your main breaker off and you need to evacuate your house. You need to be very careful while you're doing this. You need to make sure you're not standing in the water. Make sure your hands are dry. Make sure your feet are dry. Cut your main power off. That way we know there won't be a fire while you're gone. Uh, and, and it'll keep us all safe. And another thing is um, we're getting reports of a lot of people just out riding around and they're doing damage to houses that already have water in them. Uh, the more they get out and ride, the more damage it's going to do. So if you don't have to get out, don't get out. Uh, if you need to get out, if you've got to go to the store, get milk or bread or whatever, you need to uh, travel the main roads uh, and, and come out of your neighborhood slowly. Uh, if, if everybody will do those two things, uh, at this point, we have no reported injuries or fatalities in this event. Uh, that's how we want to end this event. So we want to ask everybody to do everything they can to be as safe as they can. Wonderful. Thank you, David. And also, if people need shelter, where can they go to for shelter? Uh, the Washington County Convention Center is currently opened as a shelter. Uh, the last count, there were only five people in there. Uh, if the population doesn't go up, we will probably close it tonight. 
we will reopen it uh, with the expected rainfall coming back. We will reopen it sometime tomorrow. Uh, we should have that information by 10 o'clock get you updated on that. Awesome. And David, we plan to stay in touch with you to get more information on how you can be safe and if the weather gets worse with emergency management. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you. Now, Sunday, officials are saying that we are we can't expect to have severe weather on Sunday, so be prepared for that. And officials are saying, again, if you do not have to get on the roadway, do not get out on the road because the roads are flooded. And when it gets dark, it's hard to see those areas. Live in Washington County, Melanie Dawson, WXVT, your Delta News. All right, thank you so much, Melanie. We'll stay tuned. This is WXVT. We'll be right back.